pursue Ohio State. Their only two losses, of course, have been to the Buckeyes, and the Hawkeyes still bidding for an upper division finish. Cheney jumps against Earl. Earl with a seven-inch height advantage, but Indiana comes up with the basketball. On the baseline, it is Cheney, and A.C. Earl rips down the rebound for the Hawks. Barnes guilty of the walk, and the ball goes right back to the Hoosiers. The crowd, if you haven't been here in person, is right on top of the action here. I'll tell you, the uh, sidelines are just straight up and down, almost a seven-story building, and uh, nobody is in the end zone. Very few students, very few seats there. Odd uh, configuration for a basketball arena. Anderson fires. Boy, did he have a against the great game. He had a great game on Sunday. The shot from the corner and Hawkeye's offensive or uh, defensive rebounding. So Skinner with the foul, and now the heralded freshman, Damon Bailey. Maybe there's never been a freshman in college basketball with as much free publicity as Damon Bailey started getting it in eighth grade when Bob Knight discovered it. I'd have to say maybe in the Big Ten without uh, too much thought, Lou Alcindor, of course, had a lot of publicity when he went to UCLA. From the top, it is Bailey. And with the rebound, Chris Street. And again, he's led Iowa in rebounding the last two games. 17 rebounds over the last two. And Indiana will be man-to-man. -man. They will do that about 99% of the time. Nover bothering A.C. Earl, and the Hawkeyes will replay it. But good defense there by Matt Nover. At 6'8", he's trying to guard the 6'10", A.C. Earl. You would anticipate the Hawkeyes looking inside. Earl pumping up, trying to draw the foul or score the bucket. A little over a minute has been played, still no score as you take a look at Chris Reynolds. Has not started a lot for Indiana this year, but he is getting the call tonight. Earl open in the middle on a good pass from Skinner. Nice ball movement. Earl put himself right in the middle of the lane, nobody around him. And AC is a very good offensive player when it isn't a physical play. He's had some trouble with some of the more physical centers like Perry Carter and Tompkins of Wisconsin. The penetration gets the ball to Nover in deep, and A.C. Earl slams it off the glass. Skinner for three. And the Hawkeyes off to a 5 to nothing lead. And that has been a trouble spot for the Hawkeyes. Getting started, getting it picked up in the high gear. Two good baskets by Iowa. And the half-court pressure bothering Indiana a little bit. That's something different. In Iowa City, the Hawkeyes went full court. Indiana beat it going over the top, having three-on-one, three-on-two breaks. A skip pass to Anderson, who is open. The Hoosiers have missed their first three shots. The Hawkeyes have a 5 to nothing lead in the basketball. And the Hawkeyes playing the zone defense, really cutting down the ability for Indiana to penetrate off the dribble. And the first change in the lineup is made by Tom Davis for the Hawkeyes. He sends Jay Webb in, and Jay Flinters will also come in. The Hawkeyes with the forward change to get things started. A.C. Earl will take a seat on the bench as Winters comes into the action. Also, James Moses will leave. And those two substitutes, Webb and Winters, uh, they just got here a couple hours before game time. They stayed back for some classwork along with Kevin Smith. So they did not get involved in yesterday's practice or the shoot-around. Well, Davis not happy with the scheduling this year by the Big Ten, meaning his team missing a lot of class, more than usual, because of all these weeknight road games. So therefore, he made the decision that academics would be concentrated on first. Here's Skinner to the baseline. The foul is called on Skinner and Troy now with the only two fouls of the ball game. And Troy Skinner has been the only Hawkeye to foul out in Big Ten games. Only one disqualification by Iowa, and that was against Indiana in Iowa City. Street harassing Bailey. Against the trap, he finds Cheney. That's Nover. And he is fouled by Jay Webb. Webb slides into it. Well, once that ball reaches the middle of any press, the defensive team is at a distinct disadvantage. The ball got put in right to the high post. Calvert Cheney has the ability to drive 
shoot. He's a very good shooter from 15 feet. Or there, the pass off to either of the wings, Anderson or Novar. So almost three minutes into the game at 17.09, Nover gets the first two for Indiana, now tries to complete the three-point play, and Street claims the rebound. 5-2, Hawks lead. This is Val Barnes coming off a rough shooting night against the Badgers. Offensive rebound by Webb, but it's blocked by Anderson. Anderson coming across on the back side, getting that block on Jay Webb. Webb trying to take it up strong. That's what you need to do in traffic. Catch it and score in traffic. Take care of the basketball. Momentary interruption to play because Jody okay. Sylvester comes over to talk to the official yeah, score. He had a shot and was blocked and went out of bounds. We're talking about the new rule this year on a block shot when the ball goes out of bounds, the clock is not reset. Let's, let's put the shot clock shows 45 seconds. It should be at the time when the ball was blocked out of bounds. The only time it would be reset is if it's under five seconds, it's reset to five seconds. A good rule because it gives more of a benefit to the defense when they block. So they're gonna put it down to 33 seconds on the shot clock. They had reset it, but now they start it at 33. The Hawkeyes with a five to two lead in the basketball. Webb over and over, and clearing the rebound is Chris Reynolds. Cheney gets Winters into the air. Albert Cheney having a whale of a season. Number two in the conference in scoring, number two in field goal shooting, and number one in free throw shooting in conference games. Tremendous first step quickness. Good recovery by the Hawks. Here's Val Barnes drawing a foul against Nover. Val Barnes, extremely fundamental player. Just knew where the advantage, disadvantage was. He was going against 6'8 players. He gave him two fakes to get him in the air. And then the foul by Novar as Barnes leaned into him, trying to get the shot off. Just a smart play. Excuse me, Earl and Street back in as Webb will leave. At the line, it's number 20, Val Barnes, two free throws. Val Barnes this year, 72% from the foul line. Val, a teammate of Indiana's Damon Bailey last summer during the Olympic Festival. Hawks now lead by a score of 6-4. Indiana coaches worried a little bit about their team, how they would respond after that. Double overtime loss at Columbus, Ohio. They had what they term spirited practices during the week. Barnes now checks out as Moses takes his place. What a game that was on Sunday. Double overtime, 26 lead changes, 24 ties. Of course, the Buckeyes won it 96-94. Just a great game to watch. Two well-coached teams executing what the coaches wanted done. Damon Bailey cranking a three. Rebound to Eric Anderson, and that's what Tom Davis was talking about before the game, the Hawkeyes must prevent. In that zone, sometimes you get lost, you just turn to the basket, trying to get position. Good job by Street that time, offensive rebound. And of course, that is one of Iowa's trademarks under Tom Davis. Just four people going to the glass as hard as they can. Street has three rebounds already. Coast to coast goes Reynolds. Kevin Smith tries to save and cannot. It will be Indiana basketball. Hoosiers have it with 15 minutes and 32 seconds to play, but first, a timeout is called. I was led all the way. The count now. Hawkeyes 9, Hoosiers 6. We'll be right back. You can do it with true value. Some people are very particular about their workshops. That's why they fill them with master mechanic tools like the Master Mechanic 14-piece screwdriver set for just $14.99. This revolutionary fiber steel ratchet is part of their 27-piece standard and metric socket set for only $29.99. And this roomy Master Mechanic plastic toolbox is just $12.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. A manna has something most refrigerators don't. Tempasure, an automatic system that keeps food frozen just right and refrigerated food fresh, not just cold. It's an idea so good you can almost taste it. A manna.
Farming has always been a hands-on kind of business, but the makers of Counter have changed that. Introducing new Counter Lock and Load, the outstanding performance of Counter in convenient returnable containers. When locked onto specially fitted John Deere Maximerge hopper boxes, each sealed container opens automatically. Just lock it on and it loads. Protect your crop, yourself, and the environment. New Counter Lock and Load. A manna takes very kindly to laundry with big stainless steel tubs for gentler washing and easy to use touch controls to make laundry a snap from load to fold. A manna. Iowa leading Indiana by a score of 9 to 6. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Eradicane. For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about Eradicane. The Hoosiers have made their first substitution. Number four, Lyndon Jones, has come into the lineup at a guard spot. And he will take the place of Damon Bailey. You know, when both teams started, there was not a senior out there. Now Lyndon Jones, the only senior to play in this game. No doubt, these are the two youngest teams in the conference. And both of them will be very good over the next two years. Rodell Davis into the lineup for the first time with the timeout. Hawks by three. Hoosiers have not been ahead of this one. Heading quickly to the glass goes Reynolds. And the Hawkeyes intimidating underneath. Out of bounds, off Iowa. Iowa having a little trouble against uh, the driving penetration again down the middle of that zone. Have to be able to shut them off. A good perimeter shooter for a player that size. Could also go inside, of course. A lot of multi-dimensional offensive players for the Hoosiers, aren't there? Got very good athletes. Lyndon Jones, the three-pointer. That ties the game at nine. Indiana really challenging on the perimeter. Some teams have played the Hawkeyes soft. A streak tries to throw it inside to Kevin Smith. Reynolds with the steal. Anderson at the other end, fouled by streak. It'll be the first foul called against Chris. The Hawkeyes have already been assessed with four. The Hoosiers only one. Kevin Smith cutting across, ready to get the ball. That's a situation you got to understand who you're passing to. Even if Kevin Smith catches it, what can he do with it inside on the block? At the other end, streak giving a good foul. Preventing the two-point dunk. as a good foul to give to make sure Anderson cannot score. Anderson, the junior out of Chicago, 18th career scorer in Hoosier history, has his third. Gives Indiana their first lead at 10 to 9. Indiana has the lead of a pair. 11 to 9, 14 and a half left in the first half. really putting a lot of pressure on A.C. Earl, about 25 feet away from the basket. Bothered A.C. a little bit. He had to have dribble release. Barnes in a crowd having trouble hanging on. A.C. Earl squares up. After a little showmanship behind his back. He's tied up at 11. Watch Indiana really try and space up. The goaltender by A.C. Earl. And for Calvert Cheney, his second hoop. A.C. doesn't do that very often. Calvert Cheney loves to go baseline and then reach back with that left hand to lay it up off the glass. You don't have a chance to block it very often. That time A.C. got it a little too late. Hawkeyes can tie with the two, take the lead with the three. Reynolds stripping it away from behind, but it's out of bounds off of Indiana. Bob Knight recently inducted into the, not inducted, but nominated for the Hall of Fame, will be inducted in the spring. Yeah, voted in. I'll tell you, it's an honor well deserved. He has done just about everything in basketball when it comes to coaching titles. 554 wins in his career, number seven on the active list. Al Barnes continues to struggle, and Jay Webb's got an offensive rebound. That's three out of his last 20 for Val Barnes. Hoosiers lead. Earl loses. It's Cheney picking it off. Lyndon Jones for 
Cleveland's in ahead. Open Cheney. He got 30 the last time the Hawkeyes and the Hoosiers played. He has seven already, 16 to 11, Indiana. He's a very good basketball player, Calvert Cheney. Lyndon Jones with the defense, forcing Skinner to walk. Tom Davis continuing to shuffle players as Smith will come in. We take a look at the turnovers. And I will lead by a substantial amount. And that's really just half-court defense by the Indiana team. Iowa has to take care of the basketball. When you're on the road, you've got to understand there may be an advantage to that home team reaching and grabbing. That's Jamal Meeks who's just checked in. He has 130 assists this year. You can look, he will not be a shooter. He looks to get other people the basketball. Jones looks to penetrate, but the Hawks don't let him. Now Meeks will take it to the hole and be fouled on the way in. But even on the way in, Meeks was looking to pass it up somewhere else. Winters picks up the foul, his first. A good ball fake by Cheney starts the whole offensive sequence drawing a defender over, leaving a gap where Meeks could go right down the middle, had the opportunity with the foul, disrupted the play. Meeks, a junior from Freeport, Illinois, as you mentioned, only averages three a game. Thus far, the foul situation definitely favoring the home team. Watch the Hoosier players. When they get the ball, they square up right away. Anderson on the rebound. Earl tries to block from behind. And AC picks up his first foul. Tom Davis and AC Earl both don't think so. The ball is short of the basket, an air ball bounces off hands. And then the foul called AC Earl from behind. And the official that called it was underneath the basket. Anderson now with five. And with 12.02 to play in the first half, Indiana builds their lead to 17 to 11. Anderson, 14 points, nine rebounds when these teams got together in Iowa City. Now has six, Hawkeyes trail, 18-11. Webb turns and then he is fouled by Anderson. That's only the second foul on Indiana, the first on Anderson. And a timeout is called with 11, 11 minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the first half. Indiana has grabbed the lead back, 18 to 11. And we'll be back after these. Life at IBM. Announcing the new 1991 Plymouth Sundance America. At just $76.99, it's the lowest priced American car and the lowest priced car in the world with an airbag. Sundance is a sporty five-seater that comes with a lot of great features like power steering and power brakes. Plus, it has plenty of cargo space and gets great mileage. Now, that's value that's hard to beat, and that's Advantage Plymouth. Visit your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now, where you have the advantage. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Eradicane. For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about Eradicane. Larry Morgan and Mac McCausland back at the assembly hall where Indiana has scored the last seven points. What are they doing differently? Let's turn it around for them. Well, it's been their half-court defense that has forced Iowa to turn it over. Indiana's gone down, gotten some easy opportunities. It's an 11-2 run, and basketball is a game of streaks. And over the last three and a half minutes, Indiana has had a streak. Meeks goes for the steal, but Smith recovers. And deep in his web on the pump. A block by Cheney, and now the Hawkeyes keep it again. Here's Kevin Smith. He knocks home a three. What a finish he had against the Badgers the other night. That was as good of an offensive performance as I've seen in a long, long time in the last two and a half, three minutes of a game. He had nine of the last 11 points in the game, including a three-pointer that at the time looked like it might give Iowa the victory. Underneath it is Nover, and with the rebound, Jay Webb, and he is fouled by Meeks. Once again, Iowa did not catch Nover cutting across into the lane to a gap. You'll look, you'll see Indiana players pass to a gap or dribble to a gap or cut in to find the pass reception. That time, a good job by Novart could not finish it. I was going to have to 
have a swivel head. They got to look behind them, off to the side, see where the Indiana players are coming from. Smith into the front court for the Hawks. Picked up by Jamal Meeks. And Webb mishandles. The turnover gives it to the Hoosiers. Good penetration by Smith. Webb just not ready to receive it. And now the swap of turnovers. The Hawkeyes will get it as Indiana can't hang on to it. And Iowa comes up with a turnover on that one. Still seven to two. Indiana's done a good job in handling Iowa's pressure. Winners finds Barnes, who spots up and scores. Good post up by the 6-2 Val Barnes over Meeks. 18-16, Iowa a moment ago, trailed by seven, but since the timeout, the Hawks have come back to run five unanswered points. Five seconds to go in the half as the shot is drilled by Calvert Cheney, coming off a 26-point performance Sunday against the Buckeyes. You see right there why Bob Knight says Cheney has a chance to be as good as anybody we've ever had in India. But Cheney proves he too is human <laughs> by fumbling. Then we ought to talk about him more often. Changes for both teams. Reynolds back in for Indiana. Rodell Davis coming back to the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Meeks leaving for Indiana. Smith to be met at the midcourt line by Reynolds. Reynolds may be as good a quick defender on the perimeter as there is in the conference. He's really shadowing Smith, so he can't get the ball. And Iowa's offense now is starting 30 feet away from the basket. Indiana's guards really are exceptional defensively. Well, the pressure they put on just did not allow you to get in your normal shooting positions. Indiana fans wanted Kevin Smith called for stepping out of bounds. Davis swipes the inbounds. And now we'll have a chance to score at the line. I just can't say enough about Chris Street on the ball, getting a deflection again. Quick reaction by Chris, Chris Street, just traces the ball, deflects it, and Rodell Davis, who had a very good game here, in Assembly Hall last year, gets a chance to uh, get some points on the board for the Hawkeyes. Right, he got 20 here last year, which up until the Michigan game this year has been a career high for him. Davis has scored for the first time tonight. Damon Bailey back into the Hoosier lineup and over with two fouls will lead. And now you are seeing maybe as good a team as Indiana could put out there when you start talking stretching a defense, especially with perimeter shooters. They got three guards, they got Bailey, Lyndon Jones, Cheney, and Anderson, who all can shoot the ball. Davis, who had struggled at the foul line, goes two for two to pull the Hawks within two. Skinner paired off with Jones. And on the penetration, Lyndon Jones. A 6 2 senior from Marion, Indiana. Scores his fifth, and Indiana leads at 22-18. He just ball fake the point defender out of there, went down the lane, shot it from eight feet. Eight minutes, 48 seconds to play first half. Hawkeyes in arrears by four. Moses gets the bounce. James averaging 10 a ball game. Shooting at 44% this year. Nice improvement over a season ago. Earl about ready to come back into the Hawk attack. The lob for Anderson. Once again, the lane was open. Anderson just makes a two-step cut. 
right into the middle. Nobody fronts him. Nobody puts an elbow up to try and hold him from making that penetration across there. Street finds Davis, but Anderson is there to foil the play. Another offensive rebound by Street, and he is fouled by Bailey. Chris Street's playing very well, looking aggressively on the boards, trying to find opportunities for his shot. And at least four rebounds for Street, two of them offensive rebounds. Three substitutions for Iowa. Number 10, Kevin Smith. Eric Anderson averaging 14 points a game, also the leading Hoosier rebounder. He's pulling seven and a half down per game for the tops in the league. 24-20 Indiana, Street goes to the line. 67% free throw shooter. When you look at these two teams, Larry, you're looking at the teams that get to the free throw line the most of anybody in the conference. And they do it in a little different style. Iowa tries to pound the ball inside, post up people. While Indiana will do it primarily not with a post, but drive penetration. That's Iowa's first free throw miss. They hit their first five. 24, 21, Indiana with the lead. 33, Pat Graham has come to the lineup for the Hoosiers. The penetration by Barnes. And the foul is spotted. Street guilty of fouling for the Hawks. His second, Iowa seven. Barnes doing a patented move. One dribble power up. At the time, no question about Chris Street coming over the back on Anderson. But again, good aggressiveness by Street. Not intimidated by Assembly Hall, with the Indiana Hoosiers. He made the comment that when he was growing up in high school and watching the games on TV, he thought this might be the toughest place to play in the Big Ten. But you're right, hasn't bothered him here at all. Our guys try to cut a three-point Indiana lead. Earl against Anderson. And Jones rebound. Good play by Iowa, good pressure release, lob pass. It was open, it's not executed. Indiana trying to build on a 24-21 lead. Reynolds, quick move inside. And this is Grand to Anderson. So the basket does not count because of offensive interference. 24-21, Indiana holds the lead. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. Wild thing. It is a wild thing. Oh. Come shout and sing, join in the ring. It could be queen or it could be king. You go your way and I'll go mine. As long as you just make it fun. Good times roll with the clean, fresh taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up, never let you down. Since 1951, Hudson's have won 79 NASCAR competitions. Plymouth's 190. And Chevrolet's 341. And one gasoline has fueled more of these than all other brands combined. 76. The same quality and winning spirit also goes into the one car we care about fueling most. Yours. Get a Hawkeye antenna ball. Free with a fill-up at participating 76 stations. Power failure? Here's something that'll brighten your mood. The Black & Decker Safe Lighter Emergency Light from True Value Hardware Stores. It lights up automatically during power failure. Works as a portable flashlight or a handy nightlight. In February, get the Safe Lighter Emergency Light from Black & Decker for just $7.99 while supplies last at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Transportation provided by Northwest Airlines. Proud to be a leader in on-time performance. Northwest Airlines, we're committed to getting you there on time. Back at the assembly hall, Iowa trails 24-21. The field goal percentage shows Indiana's suddenly picking up. Well, you're really looking at two good defensive efforts 
Iowa using the zone, Indiana using man-to-man. Scoreboard's been stuck here for a couple of minutes. A 24-21 in favor of the Hoosiers. Earl on a crowd, he walks with it. The ball goes back to Indiana. During that last time out, Mac, there was something about the demeanor, as you see A.C. Earl quite perturbed by the call, something about the demeanor of Bob Knight making me think he wanted that last bucket. I watch A.C. Earl go across, called him for a jump stop, and said that was travel. You're right, though. Uh, Bob Knight, Tom Rucker had a discussion about that offensive goaltending by Anderson, and Bob Knight probably only spent about a third of the time out talking to his team. Yeah, he had to spend 40 seconds going after Rucker. Anderson over Webb. And Anderson has got 10 first half points. He and Cheney, 19 of the Hoosiers, 26. first half. Winters tries to get underneath and it's knocked into bounds by Jones, although again, Bobby Knight is up off the bench. He didn't see it that way. Number 40 is Cheney back into the lineup for Indiana. Their leading score at 21.6. Chris Reynolds checked out and that may help Kevin Smith. Lyndon Jones will take him. Jones is not quite the defensive player that Reynolds is. Reynolds extremely quick and stronger than he was last year. Of course, all the Hoosiers are stronger. They went in the weight room last spring and summer. There's some theory that maybe the success Purdue had had with their bulkier players. This CBS News special report is part of our continuing coverage of the war in the Gulf. From Saudi Arabia, here is Dan Rather. Marlon Fitzwater, the official spokesman at the White House, is about to give uh, the official response to the agreement tonight between the Iraqis and the Soviets on a new peace proposal. So let's go to the White House briefing room in Washington now. Uh, Marlon Fitzwater, about to read the uh, statement. President Bush is at a play. The president... Uh, heard about the peace proposal. There was one report. Uh, we believe that Gorbachev uh, himself talked to the president, but not absolutely confirmed on that. The president absorbed it and uh, then went to a play at Ford's Theater. There's been no official reaction since that time. We're now about to get to the first from Marlon Fitzwater. Well, there's been a slight delay in the Fitzwater appearance. Uh, now, here is Marlon Fitzwater. President Gorbachev called President Bush at 6.47 p.m. this evening to discuss his conversation with Iraqi Foreign Minister Tariq Aziz. President Gorbachev outlined all of the major points of the Soviet initiative developed by himself and the Foreign Minister. President Bush thanked President Gorbachev for his intensive and useful efforts but raised serious concerns about several points in the plan. President Bush said the United States will consult with its coalition partners on the proposal. We are in the process of examining the Soviet initiative tonight. The United States and its coalition partners continue to prosecute the war. That is the uh, sum and substance of the situation that we have at this point. I'll try to answer a few questions. Marlon, did uh, President Gorbachev give any indication that uh, uh, once President Bush gave him these concerns that he was going to take those back to Aziz? And did he leave any hope that uh, there may be some give on the part of Iraqis on those points the President raised? Uh, they didn't uh, discuss follow-on uh, procedures. Uh, President Bush did say that we would be uh, examining these uh, points tonight and uh, uh, we will be considering then how we intend to respond. I would not expect anything, any response uh, tonight, anything before tomorrow. But in terms of what happens then, uh, uh, that really is contingent upon on how we view uh, the various points in this plan and what action needs to be taken at that time. <clears throat> Excuse me, Helen. What are the concerns 
that uh, what are the chief drawbacks as uh, the administration would see? Well, we don't want to go into the individual points. Of course, uh, uh, this plan was just announced by the uh, Soviets a uh, very, very uh, short time ago. The uh, telephone conversation would last at approximately 33 minutes. And uh, although they did get a chance to go through the major points, we obviously have a considerable analysis to do. But I would uh, emphasize again that as they went through the various points, President Bush did state the concerns that he felt the coalition would have on this, on this matter, uh, both in terms of uh, points that are in the plan that we have problems with, as well as uh, issues that are not included. So uh, there are a number of, uh, of issues to resolve. But this does hold up the ground war, doesn't it? The ground oh, hey, hey. That's Webb. Street, another offensive rebound. And Cheney takes it from it. So Indiana, seeing Iowa be very aggressive on the offensive glass, finally comes out with it. And then Chris Street, perhaps in frustration, picks up the foul, and it will be his third. There's a lot of arm slapping, wrist grabbing, both ways in this one. Cheney makes the save, and three Hawkeyes try and pin Anderson in as he steps through. They call Chris Street for slapping across the back of the arm on Anderson. Anderson, the 18th best scorer in Indiana career history. Oh, oh! And Earl with the rebound. Iowa down by five, 33 to 28, 240 left to play in the first half. Right with the fourth rated team in the country, Indiana 22 and 3 overall. Indiana so aggressive defensively. I was really had to show some patience on offense. And they've done a good job. Indiana has played very good, very aggressive defense. And Iowa has been patient, looking for a backdoor situation or a low post option. And then there's no team help for Indiana. It's a one-on-one -on -one move for Iowa. Anderson with his second foul. Bob Knight pulls him out, sends the starter, Matt Nover in. And Pat Graham will also come back into the lineup for Indiana. He will spell Lyndon Jones. Now I would expect Nobar to really play down on the blocks as a post player. Cheney will go the baseline, and the other three will be on the perimeter. AC Earl coming into the game with 86 blocks, and of course, every block he makes, a Hawkeye single season record. He had 18 points last time out against Indiana. a three-point game and there's a timeout on the floor two minutes 16 seconds remain in the first half to score indiana 33 iowa 30 we'll be back after these words from your local stations the corn is high and healthy here and things are as they should be here there's no velvet leaf no cockleburr no canada thistle and there will be no carryover because this farmer has changed from atrazine to banvel banvel with no carryover that's a change for the better from atrazine to banvel the changing of the guard It's the one that gets used. U.S. West Direct. That's why it's open. I'm calling this time out to tell you about the other game in town, the Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Celephon. At your old dealer, that means more than cash back. It means this specially equipped Cutlass Supreme with a three-point bonus back that won't cost you extra. V6, fog lamps, leather-wrapped steering wheel, aluminum wheels, and more. A $12.99 value. No extra charge. As for cash back, your old dealer will toss that in, too. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. 
when you talk quickness on the Iowa team, it's really Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith called maybe the quickest player in the Big Ten by Demetrius Caleb of Michigan. And right there, you see, went right by three Hoosiers layup. Kevin Smith starting to mature as far as an offensive player, understanding the Tom Davis system. Greg Graham, number 20, and Pat Graham, number 33 in the Indiana lineup. Also there, Nover, Cheney, and Bailey. I will look to do a little shadowing on Damon Bailey, and the rest are playing a zone right after that timeout. A good coaching move by Tom Davis. That'll give something else for Bob Knight to go over at halftime. You'll have to review that. Maybe I will never use it again. With 1.44 left to play in the first half, the fouls call on Indiana. Or excuse me, call on Jay Webb for the Hawks. The illegal block is the call on Webb. And Webb has picked up his second personal foul. So Iowa with the possession, a chance to cut a three-point Indiana lead, and the turnover will give Indiana a chance at the free throw line and a chance to add to a three-point lead. We'll take a look at maybe a triangle and two as Cheney and Damon Bailey came over to talk to Coach Knight. And it was Bailey that recognized the change up on the defense. He came over and told Coach, hey, we're doing something different. What are we supposed to do? What a basketball mind. He has not scored tonight. AC Earl has the rebound. And again, the Hawks have a chance to trim a three-point Hoosier lead. 1.39 to go first half. Smith really having some success penetrating. Not necessarily that time, but he has really a number of times been able to penetrate. There he goes again. This time, however, he is forced out of bounds, and it's Indiana ball. And of course, there's no force out. Either there's a foul or you're out of bounds. And Smith coming along the baseline. No step, out, no option. Team help over there by Graham. Iowa now with a dozen first half turnovers. The Hoosiers only five. Big turnaround from the first game in Iowa City when the Hoosiers finished with 27 turnovers in that game. A figure that I'm sure Coach Knight mentioned a time or two this week. Now they had 16 in the first half. From three-point land, it is Graham, and with the rebound is Brick Tubbs, who's just come into the lineup. There is one minute. Iowa could get the ball back one more time, so this could be a two-for-one. Based upon the opportunity that Iowa decides to go for an offensive shot. Right now, they're just doing ball control. And they just wind this clock down, give Indiana one more offensive opportunity. Shot clock at 22, first half clock at 44. Clock at 14. Shot clock at 10. Barnes will penetrate. And with the block, Rick Graham, the 6'4 sophomore from Indianapolis. And the shot clock operator again put up 45 seconds. And they are now asking for it to be set back. And it was at six seconds when the shot was taken and blocked out. And again, had it been five, they would have reset. Only back to five. Right, right, or under five. Iowa, of course, leading the Big Ten in block shots, but you saw the graphic that Indiana is having the better edge of the inside defense tonight with five of the blocks. Of course, Bob Knight is just staring at his scoring bench, and this is at Indiana. And they put up the six seconds. That's where it should be. So that's how much time Iowa has to get a shot off. 29 seconds on the first half clock. Skinner will have to take it. No, Barnes will try. And it's Earl underneath. Good effort by the guards. Barnes and Skinner both were trapped by taller players. They have the ability to get the ball to an open teammate. And then Earl finished it off. Nover on the drive, and Indiana leads it by three. Barnes, desperation. Nope, and it's a three-point game at the half. 
So Tom Davis has got to be pleased with his Hawkeyes effort on the road. One of the tough places to play in the Big Ten against the fourth-rated team in the country, and Iowa within three. The halftime score, Indiana 35, the Iowa Hawkeyes 32. We'll be right back at the Assembly Hall. Tonight's game is being brought to you by True Value Hardware. Farmland Industries. And by Unical. At 7 o'clock Saturday night, join us for the Illini and Iowa. Hawk back under the floor with Street, Earl, Barnes, Skinner, and Moses the same way they started the game. Bobby Knight will make a change. He'll have Lyndon Jones at the back line, along with Damon Bailey, up front, Dover, along with Anderson, and Cheney. And right away, Iowa comes with a backdoor cut. Good move, high post. Stay now. And then Moses going to the back door. And Jones, Coach Knight always believes the people that play hard in the game and perform well or play well in practice and play hard there should get starting opportunities. And of course, Jones had 10 points. Earl took his long over Nover, and the Hoosiers try to start second half scoring as Cheney pulls up. Really not a good shot by E.C. Earl. That hook shot took him away from the basket. Not the one that's on the other side of the lane that takes him right to the basket when he makes a little spin. Recalling the first time these teams met, January the 19th, it was an Indiana victory, 97-77, a halftime tie at 40. So Iowa's got to watch the second half start. That's what crippled them in Iowa City. Indiana scored 59 points in that second half. And right now, Indiana comes out with two quick baskets. And Coach Davis is going to take that timeout to prevent any type of run by the Hoosiers at the start. So Davis has to use the timeout with less than a minute gone in the second half. 19.06 to play. Indiana builds the lead to seven. We'll be right back. A performance story from Phillips 66. Subject, the environment. The fragile, the beautiful, the irreplaceable. How do we help ensure they'll remain part of our environment? Example, this water treatment system made with a Phillips plastic that helps keep our rivers clean, clear, and alive. Phillips 66, you'll find performance in everything we do. Through the ages, people have gone to great lengths to cover their feet for hard work, for hard play. Today, things were a lot easier with Rockport shoes. Rockports are dress and casual shoes that feel like tennis shoes and look great, too. And best of all, you don't have to go far to get a pair of Rockports. With a Walker shoe store just around the corner, all you do is walk into Walkers and walk into the age of comfort. Call 1-800-779-SHOE for the Walker store nearest to you. Walk into Walkers. What do you think? Here's a better idea. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Welcome to the Bermuda Triangle. No wonder nobody ever comes back. Yes, Last time these teams played, Indiana hit 14 of their first 15 shots in the second half. So far, they're two of two in this half. Indiana's coming out, ready to fire it up. Cheney off the dribble, just a straight pull up. Then in Jones, nice crossover dribble. And all five Hawkeyes are around him in the lane. They can't stop him. And so with those two baskets, Tom Davis using a timeout. Now the Hawkeyes hopefully have regrouped as they come up the floor one minute into the second half. Away by Jones. He is playing an outstanding game. Cheney against Moses. It will count, and he will go to the line. Moses with his first foul. And now a 6 to nothing run by the Hoosiers to begin the second half. It looked like Moses may have stepped on the heel of Cheney, or Cheney crossed his legs because he stumbled a little bit as he goes in. Well, Moses has his leg come across in front. That begins the contact, and then the arm. Good athletic move. The left-hander, the only left-hander to play for Bob Knight. He recruited another one, Lawrence Funderburg. He's going to be at Ohio State next year. 
Thunder Burke and Cheney, of course, in the same freshman class. Seems like somebody's always outshine Cheney. It was Thunder Burke in that recruiting class. Cheney did not get Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana because he broke a ball in his leg before the state tournament. And a teammate, Pat Graham, won it. Okay, on Cheney, people just didn't know about it. Very few people, including those around Indiana. What they do now is Cheney comes up with another steal and a foul against Kevin Smith. It's interesting, Cheney did not go to many summer camps at all. Like after his freshman or sophomore year, and then after his junior, he decided he wanted to go. He was going to go to the BC camp, and Jim Cruz down in Evansville said, now nah, you really don't want to go. He'd stay home in Evansville. Come here to college. But he went, of course, and then about night saw him. Loved him. Hoosiers, first seven points in the second half. Try to make it more. This is Bailey, who has not scored yet. Barnes on Bailey. Matchup of two of the best newcomers in the league this year. And Cheney from long range connects. He has a 16.9 underway. And it's Indiana's biggest lead at 44-32. And he's seven for eight from the field. And Cheney, you know, you usually think of a lot of high percentage shooters somebody around the basket. You know, people, maybe they're scoring layups, getting offensive rebounds. Cheney shoots it from everywhere. Lyndon Jones picking up the foul. Tom Davis going to his bench. Jay Webb will come in, and James Winters will come in. Iowa needs to answer this run by Indiana with a run of their own. And 11 to nothing, Indiana run. Moses inside, and there's contact by Indiana and a foul against Cheney. Moses using the left hand here himself. Normally, Moses, a right-handed shooter, receives a good bounce pass. You think he might go up and try and shovel that off the glass with the right hand. Instead, uses it with the left-hand hook, and he drew that foul. Moses now with five, and that's the first Iowa point of the second half. It comes at the 17-35 mark. One more for Moses. Scored nine against the Hoosiers last time out. And it's a 44-34 Indiana lead. Iowa comes with a full court pressure. Indiana tries to get the ball in the middle to break it. Hawkeyes trapping Jones, but knocking it away. That'd be called like a reset of the pressure. There's full court pressure. Indiana didn't attack it, so I will reset the pressure one more time at midcourt. Lyndon Jones with the ball. He's in double figures, has 10. That's what he got against the Hawks last time. Nover spins it in the lane, and Winters takes it away from him. Moses losing control of it, and Anderson comes out with it. James really had the open three-pointer. Did not take it, drove into trouble, and then lost the ball with the turnover. Sixteen fifty-five to go, Indiana leads 44-34. Bailey over Winters and Webb. And underneath, a push is spotted. Anderson and Earl that time jockeying for position, and it's Anderson who draws the personal. The personal foul, Indiana. Bailey going to his right, and that's the way he favors, likes to dribble to the right. Anderson up over the back of Earl, and the foul. Anderson, the first Hoosier with more than two fouls. Iowa has one player with three, and that's Chris Green. Hawks still don't have a second half basket. We're at 16.35. Over with the rebound. A good rebounder per minute's played. Averages about 20 minutes a game and gets four rebounds a game. Too tall for Bailey. Hawkeye ball. And Bob Knight tried to pick up a chair and was unable to do so because they're chained together. Cause is kind of a little laughter from the crowd. And the points off the turnover is obviously favoring the Hoosiers. They've had more opportunities. Hoosiers have done a good job off Iowa mistakes, making the Hawkeyes pay for it, getting some points on the scoreboard. 
Winters steps out of bounds, and the ball goes to Indiana. So the Iowa scoring drought continues. Almost four minutes into the second half, and still no baskets. Winters and Moses will lead. Tom Davis will send Street into the lineup, along with Rodell Davis. Sunday, and it's the mental part of the game, especially defensively, that he has to concentrate on. Coach Knight told us back in Iowa City, the hardest thing to teach a freshman is to guard someone and guard them effectively. Street looks to inbound. Is Indiana doing something significantly different than has kept Iowa off the scoreboard, or is Iowa just not getting very good shooting luck? Iowa just has not been able to execute because of that pressure. Indiana came out, again, with good, solid quarter court pressure, not giving passing lanes. If you can't find passing lanes, you don't see open people. And some of the time, the lane is there, but it looks like it's taken away because of the angle the defensive player plays it at, where he has his arms extended, and it looks like it's taken away. Val Barnes has scored four thus far. I was only points in the half from the free throw line where they're three out of three. What you have to do, Larry, against good man-to-man -man pressure is break it down. You can't just go one-on-one -on -one because you run into good team help, and Indiana is the master at that. Pat Graham against the double team, loses it to Street. The battle for it, and Indiana will have it. Street tries to save, can't do it. Nope, now the officials change their mind. London Bradley first pointed that it would be Indiana's ball and then got some help and changed his mind. Street going for the ball. 
And that's one of those options an official may have wanted to call a foul or had an opportunity to call a foul on Graham. Instead, just gives the ball back to Iowa as he wasn't sure if the contact maybe was initiated by Street. Neither coach seems to be happy. Davis wanted the foul and Knight wanted the basketball. Now a foul is called on Indiana's Nover. And Matt Nover has drawn his fourth. Thirteen fifty-nine to go. Indiana 50, Iowa 36. Indiana now with their six team foul, so the Hawkeyes will have some free throw opportunities down the stretch, it would appear. Barnes on the entry pass from Skinner, and that's Iowa's first basket of the second half. It comes at 13 50. And Iowa within 12 at 50 to 38. Nover walks with it, the Hawkeyes has the ball again. That's not what Coach Knight would want, is Novar catching the ball on a break. Take a look at the rebounding so far in the game. I was had trouble getting out of the shoot in the second half, because Indiana hasn't missed any shots. And that's the hook we talked about, ACO taking that baby hook towards the basket, not taking it away from the basket. Hawks back to within 10 with 13.20 to go. Iowa, a great comeback effort against Wisconsin on Saturday night, trying to mount another one on the road at Wilmington, Indiana. Nice pass inside to Nover. And he is fouled by Moses. Moses his second, the Hawkeyes their fourth. Nover and I will recognize the cutter coming across the middle that time. Just a little late getting there, blocking out from making the strong pass to the lane. He's able to receive the basketball. Webb in for Street and now Smith in for Skinner. Nover 67% from the foul line, a starter tonight. He's about the poorest free throw shooter on the Indiana team. Yeah, and you're right, he's not bad at 67%. It's just a good shooting who's your team, isn't it? Very, very good shooting. Every position. 51-40 Indiana. Moses on the spin. And you've seen Iowa score a lot with post-up plays by Moses, by Barnes. Nice play by A.C. Earl. Nover thought he had an open crack at the basket, but A.C. was there. Bailey making a challenge move. Bailey trying to read A.C. Earl, one of the leading shot blockers in the country. A.C. just swats that down. Indiana has seen a one-time 16-point lead come down to single digits at 51 to 42. And you'll see Indiana against the zone. They try and distort it, get some balance, uh, or I should say off-balance numbers. They'll try and get four or five people on one side of the court. Cheney wants to take Webb to the baseline, and Jay lays a hand on him. And that's called distorting the zone, where you have five on three, or four on three. Another thing Indiana loves to do is dribble into uh, dual coverage. They'll try and find two defensive players, drive right into them, make one of them or both of them commit, and find the opening to the side. Both teams have an opportunity to go to the line fairly soon as Rodell Davis comes in, and James Moses will go out. Inbounding will be Pat Graham. Barnes defensive over forces the turnover. Hawkeye basketball. Twelve eighteen to play. The Hawkeyes making a run at the Hoosiers, who built a sixteen point lead. I would now back to the nine. was able to get the ball inside much easier in the last three or four minutes than they have any time during the game. And that's why you probably see Lawson getting ready to, to check in. 
He didn't play in the first half. Chris Lawson, number 54, 6'9", 245 pounder. Sophomore from right here in Bloomington, went to Bloomington South High School. Dover with four fouls will leave that last foul on Damon Bailey, and it's his third as AC Earl will go to the line. And Chris Lawson checks in. I tell you, for a big guy, he's got short arms. Uh, Shooter, one as time one now. of the Indiana coaches told me, he got those special mail orders. <laughs> Hawks back within seven as AC Earl cans a pair. For Indiana, had Iowa on the rope, but the Hawkeyes kept charging back straight into the lineup as Iowa will set up the pressure. Earl will leave after sinking those free throws. Bailey checks out for Indiana, and he's replaced by Chris Reynolds, who started, but is just seeing his first play in the second half. I think they want Reynolds in there for defense. Obviously, Damon Bailey, uh, you may say typical freshman in the sense he had a great game Sunday, and here, just three, four days later, does not have a good game. Graham has counted his third bucket. 53-44, Hoosiers. doing a good job getting that pass inside and then taking it right to the hole. And Iowa will probably recognize Lawson being in there is not nearly as quick a foot. And they can take advantage of him if he comes out and guards on the perimeter. 11.25 to play. Chris Street started to go up to block it, and he went towards the right hand. Cheney just turned, had the ball on the left. It was a wide open shot for him. Cheney's got 20 back at the other end. Number 20, Val Barnes connects for the Hawks. Val Barnes. Val making amends for that. Rough shooting night against Wisconsin on Saturday night. Barnes already has a dozen points. And Cheney fouled on the way through. On the foul for the Hawkeyes, Val Barnes, and for Val, it will be his first. Okay, what a great lesson for young people to watch Calvert Cheney. Every time he gets the ball, he shows you the ball. Make sure you think he's going to look to shoot it. The minute you come up on him, puts that one dribble down and just blows right by you. Cheney became a thousand point scorer in the game against Ohio State on Sunday, and he became just the fifth sophomore in Indiana history to have already amassed a thousand points. Jamal Weeks comes back into the lineup for Indiana. This will be his first appearance in the second half, and Lyndon Jones will leave. Well, Jones has played well, and the crowd appreciates his effort. Well, he was a great high school player along with Jay Edwards, same high school team. Of course, Edwards is gone, and Lyndon Jones still here. Almost halfway through the second 20-minute stanza, and no rebounds by the Iowa team. Or non 56 48 Indiana. Graham against Street. Beats against Moses. Cheney. Even when he misses, it's in the cylinder. Yeah, they probably gave him one and a half for that. That was Iowa's first rebound of the half. Here's Winters in deep. The bucket. And that's the strength of James Winters. There are a few Iowa players that really have number one, the upper body strength and the athletic ability to finish this off. Excellent pass by Chris Street. One, two people get him. And Lawson, slow and reacting, gets the foul. So he does that with a 245 pounder laying on him and Lawson, and that will be his first foul. Winters tries to complete a three-point play. On the rebound, Cheney. Iowa back to within six. It's 56-50. 10-06 to play. And the reach around against Winters. His second foul. There could be a lot of free throws in this game before it's over. There could. That is already the eighth. Rather, the seventh called against Iowa. Indiana has already been assessed with eight. Rick Moss on the right of your screen. Bruce Pearl on the left. Tom Davis, of course, in the middle. 
Rick Moss, the Iowa assistant, and Ron Belling, the assistant for Indiana, longtime friends in Illinois high school basketball. Earl with a rebound. So the Hawks, after not rebounding in the first 10 minutes of the second half, now have two quick ones. And Iowa has worked their way right back into the ballgame, trailing at 56-50. Earl is fouled. That's a lot of Indiana attention on A.C. Earl. And picking up the personal was Graham. Graham is first. A double fouls against the Hoosiers now. A double down by the Indiana team, and you got two heads down on the bench. Dockage, Dan Dockage, former player, and Bob Knight. I thought that's what you meant by the double <laughs> down. They both had their heads down. <laughs> Earl with 13. Hawks within five. And I will really show him some maturity on the road. They showed it at Michigan State, and they're doing it hit here again at Bloomington, Indiana. Tremendous comeback effort by the Hawks, who are down in this half by 16. Now they trail by just four. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. When Sibagagi set out to create the industry's best seed corn, we had to go through a lot. We spent millions of dollars testing which hybrids would stand up under your toughest conditions. The driest, and the wettest. 40,000 hybrids later, here's what we've got to show for it. Funks G4385 and 4393. Two 105-day hybrids will hold up against anybody. Funks G from Sibagaygi Seed Division. Announcing the new 1991 Plymouth Sundance America. At just $76.99, it's the lowest-priced American car and the lowest-priced car in the world with an airbag. Sundance is a sporty five-seater that comes with power steering and power brakes. It's also available with a package that features air conditioning, dual mirrors, and more. Now that's value that's hard to beat, and that's Advantage Plymouth. Visit your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now where you have the advantage. The corn is high and healthy here, and things are as they should be. Here, there's no velvet leaf, no cockleburr, no Canada thistle, and there will be no carryover, because this farmer has changed from atrazine to Banvel. Banvel, with no carryover, that's a change for the better. From atrazine to Banvel, the changing of the guard. Six, Iowa 52, tremendous comeback effort by the Hawkeyes. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. Mac, the Hawkeyes have outscored the Hoosiers 18 to 6 over the last four and a half minutes. It's really settled in to be a very good defensive game both ways. Now it's a matter of which team can put together a string of baskets and play loose, not play tight. Indiana, of course, has pressure on them. They want to win the Big Ten Championship and a number one seed in one of the four regionals. Iowa has the pressure on them to make the tournament field. Reynolds misfires. Big scrap for the rebound. Iowa comes up with it. Boy, that's what drives coaches nuts. Both Knight and Davis, they saw it go off two or three of their own players' hands. Smith on the travel, it goes back to Indiana. Kevin Smith, a young man, the only a freshman, plays with an extreme amount of confidence. Says his dad had a lot to do with building that self-confidence in him when he was growing up. We look at the turnover situation, Mac. Well, Iowa still leading that category almost double over Indiana. And a lot of those have been unforced turnovers where they expected to find somebody, expected pressure, and it wasn't there. Like Kevin Smith got that travel call. Two years ago, Graham, the Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, he's had the inbounds pass to Jones. Exactly nine minutes to play. Indiana leads it 56-52. The skip pass gets Lyndon Jones open. And with a 
foul Cheney. And a good block out by Val Barnes. Val Barnes got a screen, could not get over that screen. And when that happened, again, just a fundamental move as the shot went up, he just stayed exactly on Cheney. You'll see the screen by Cheney, freeing up the shooter. Barnes stays with him the rest of the play. Now gets two foul opportunities. Really a smart play by Val Barnes. Cheney with the foul is third, just as significant. The 10th foul on Indiana, so no longer does Iowa have to hit the first to get the second. It's an automatic two. New rule in college basketball this year. Max, we talked so much about the Hawkeyes need that free throw advantage to be successful. They've got it so far. And look at that. Uh, certainly has to be a surprise. Iowa, the poor shooting team from the free throw line. Indiana, the second best next to Northwestern. And the statistics are reversed. And that's on the road. And as Barnes hits two, and Earl comes out at the two-point game. Indiana, 56. Iowa, 54. 8.45 left. got his fourth, so now Webb with four, Street with three, as far as Hawkeyes in difficulty. Indiana trying to convert. Graham taking it up strong. Webb, not the shot rejector AC Earl is, does a good job of defending the goal, making Graham go to the line to earn two. Here's the Big Ten's leading free thrower in conference action, actually overall. Graham, who one time in his career had 38 in a row, which was a Hoosier record. This season, he is an 86% free throw shooter. Uh, Iowa must recognize Indiana does have 10 fouls, eight and a half minutes left to go in the game. Now, any foul gets you two free throws. Street with another offensive rebound. What a rebounding night Chris Street has had. Well, that was a setup pass play. The lob on the far side with Indiana giving her so much pressure, always watching the ball, always seeing the ball. What they call the weak side, opposite of the ball position, will be open. A time Val Barnes put up a baseline lob shot. But it was a pass to Street, but he put back up. Fooled me. <laughs> Fooled Indiana. Merle in, Webb out. And Street to the line. Bruce Pearl talking it over with Jay Webb. And again, who knows? Maybe it was a shot. Fool me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and keep Val's shooting percentage up, though. We'll call it a pass. But whether it was or not, Chris Street still had a tremendous rebounding night. Yes, he has. Again, a two-point game. Indiana, 58. Iowa, 56. 8.27 to play. What an effort by this young Hawkeye team at one of the nation's toughest places to win. We're talking one of the top-ranked teams. Number four ranked in the country. Oh, what a rejection by AC. His second block of the game and his 88th of the season. And you know he's been waiting for that all night. Cheney for three and with the rebound again is Street. A double figure rebounding night for Street. By the way, Tom Davis is now at the scorer's table as Moses fires. He may be rebounds on how many timeouts he had left. That would be my guess. I believe he's got two left. Unforced turnover gives Iowa a chance to tie with a two or lead with a three. And the Hawkeyes will have a chance to set it up in the huddle during a timeout. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left to play. May go right down to the wire at the Assembly Hall, Indiana, 58, Iowa, 56. Man, what a day. I can sure use a vacation. <laughs> I'd like to be right here. Hey, Ice cold, bud. Hey, maybe tomorrow we should bring the boss. Nah. <laughs> if there's one thing you can count on from a farmer, it's a straight answer. So to find out why someone would switch from dual or lasso to eradicane, let's ask a farmer. Our fertilizer dealer suggested it to save money. We tried it on a few acres. We were so impressed that we used it on all of our corn this year. What'd you use before? We were using dual, but eradicane costs less and it works a lot better. Would you mind? 
For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about a raticane. Hold it, everybody. A performance story from Philip 66. Subject, gasoline. Weather is constantly changing. From region to region, throughout the year. That's why at Phillips 66, we adjust our gasoline to change with it so that your car will perform well no matter what kind of weather's up ahead. High quality, super clean gasoline for your car and more from Phillips 66. Back at the assembly hall, AC Earl coming up with an emphatic block. He just takes this one and tosses it back to midcourt. Indiana got the ball back but it gave another message to people in the middle. That time, Cheney got a little telegram. Iowa, a chance to tie it with the two. Indiana leading it, 58-56. 7.35 left. Tom Davis has really done a good job defensively tonight. Not only the zone, but he started with three-quarter court pressure in the first half, and in the second pressure, he's gone full court. Iowa scrapping for an offensive rebound. But it will be Indiana basketball. With a foul on the push, Val Barnes. Barnes with his second foul. And now the walk to the other end. The Hoosiers will be on the line. That was Iowa's ninth foul. So very soon, everything will be a two-shot foul. And as far as individually, the foul problems break down this way. Well, Webb and Street, and then Indiana, Anderson, Novard. First Cheney and Bailey just with three. Seven minutes, 22 seconds left. And the next foul on Iowa will be the 10th. Indiana's already there. As you said, Larry, everything will be two shots. 11 now for the only senior on the Hoosier squad, Lyndon Jones. It could come down to a free throw shooting contest. Indiana by four, 60-56 Hoosiers. Reynolds pressuring Smith. to penetrate. Beauty. Anderson was there, but he's got the four fouls. He could not step in and try and take that charge. Just under seven minutes to play. This is Jones left open. Six and a half, 14 of the game for a Lyndon Jones, who comes in averaging only four. Stepped right into the middle of the gap. James Moses was to be there. And he was down in the lane. Rodell Davis in for Iowa. Val Barnes will leave. Street to play it in. the ball. Moses gets it to him, but then loses it against the triple team, and coming up with it is Chris Reynolds. And Kevin Smith tries to get in the way, and commits the personal foul. Six twenty left Skinner about to come back for Iowa. Well, Indiana double teams, A.C. Earl, just did not see that backside double team. Turns right into the Hoosiers. And then the reach-in foul at the other end. Third foul against Smith. And Reynolds is just a 69% free throw shooter. Sophomore out of Peoria, Illinois. Hasn't scored tonight. Of course, you say just 69 because most of the Hoosiers are 70, 80, or even 90. A lot of college basketball players would die for a percentage like that. Indiana by five, 63-58. Moses is fouled, and James will go to the line. For Indiana, the reach-in called against Graham. Pat Graham with his second foul. Moses, a 67% free throw shooter, two out of two tonight. 
Iowa, as you mentioned, Mac, not necessarily a good free throw shooting team, but that's really one of the keys to their staying in the game tonight, their ability to hit the free throw. They had a great free throw shooting night. Nine for Moses. But Indiana's a place shooters like to shoot. The background is not very far away at all. Nothing but cord twice for Moses. 63-60, Indiana. Graham will bring it ahead. I was going to say, Indiana itself has had some great shooters in here. We talked Steve Alford, one of the great baseline shooters. I saw him here tonight, Scott May. Moses rebounds the Anderson miss. Iowa down by three, 5.48 to play. Against the fourth-weighted team in the country. Tremendous road effort by the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes showing some poise, showing some patience. Davis. And the rebound taken down by Anderson. Reynolds to Jones. The basket will count. Goal tending against Iowa. Three on one numbers by Indiana. Davis trailing, trying to give Skinner some help. Goes up and catches the ball too late. 5.15 to go. Earl backs Anderson down. Anderson with foul difficulty. For Indiana, the foul on Anderson becomes his fourth, so it grows even a little more difficult. Or is it his fifth? I believe He's fouled out. That is his fifth. Eric Anderson is fouled out with 5-12 left to play. He goes out, averaging 14 points a game. Earl tries to clear himself using a spin move, unable to get around Anderson. Anderson reacts back, gives a bump, gets called for the foul. The first time this year, Anderson has fouled out. Earl with 15, Iowa back to within four. And AC is perfect. He has not missed a free throw tonight. Now eight for eight. trying to upset the fourth-weighted team in the country. Overcoming a 16-point deficit to get right back into this one. Lyndon Jones. And Rodell Davis. Tremendous job of capturing the rebound, taking it away from Cheney. Inside rebound position. Davis blocked off Cheney. Now the Hawkeyes must be patient. Back every time down the court. Last four and a half minutes of this game. Good opportunities have to be there for Iowa. You impressed with the poise that Iowa has displayed here? They really have done a good job the whole night. AC Earl taking a good shot. I look for AC to get the ball inside. AC with 18, a one-point game, and Iowa has the chance to take the lead. Non-ball handlers trying to convert that play, unable to do so. I'll tell you, the Indiana crowd is quiet. I was at a great job Hawks of lead. taking the Hoosier crowd out of this game. Barnes the clutch shot. Hawkeyes lead by two. And Kevin Smith guilty of fouling for the fourth time. Val Barnes. A gut shot there from the corner for three. He's done it all year for Iowa. Late in the game. And now Troy Skinner will come in for Kevin Smith. They gain the free throw shooting at the point guard, and they lose the quickness. One thing about Val Barnes, he's not about to dwell on the poor performance on Saturday night. He bounces right back, puts that out of his mind as 17 tonight. 
and Shaney, who is one of her, really one of the best free throw shooters in the conference, number two in the league games, misfires. That not only misfired, it backfired. That was way left. Oh. In fact, he's now missed three in a row, and here's an 82% free throw shooter missing three in a row in the clutch. Hawks with the ball and a 67-65 lead, 3.37 to go. If the Hawkeyes can score here, I would anticipate next time they may go to their delay game. Moses! Seem to hang on the ring for an eternity, and I will lead the 69-65. Again, not a good ball handler at all. Had no confidence in dribbling. Almost lost that. Indiana just one home loss this year. That to Ohio State. This is where we talk. Who wants the ball late in the game? Great pass. Reynolds finishing it all. Shortest man on the court for Indiana getting that bucket. And full court pressure by Indiana. Skinner, an excellent free throw shooter. The last man that Indiana wants to have to foul. Hawkeyes nursing a two point lead. Two and a half to go. Rebound by Jones. Indiana can tie it with a two. Cheney will look to drive. Cheney is fouled. But Cheney will go to the line where he has missed three in a row. Skinner with his third foul. Skinner recovered, and he over-recovered to the baseline side, giving Cheney his left hand and his left leg that he could stretch in front of Skinner. Skinner then was pinned. The only thing he could do was foul. Albert Cheney, 82% on the year, has missed his last three free throws. So he's just 2 of 5 on the night. Well, how do you explain it? I was just going to say, almost defies explanation. It does. At home, leading, free thrower. Oh, yeah. And another. But over, Damon, big rebound. Damon Bailey stuck his hand in there to deflect that ball. Bailey just always alert to do little things. It'll never show up in the box score. Exactly two minutes to play. Iowa's lead is two. And a travel will get Iowa the basketball. Hawkeye ball with 158 left. And there is a timeout. Iowa bids for a big upset against the fourth weighted team in the country. 158 left. We'll be back after these. Quality is a way of life at IBM. Charlie, the Johnsons are having something delivered. Mm-hmm. It's a new air conditioner. That's nice, dear. What system so great, they'd buy it this early? Must be a Lennox. Hmm. Enjoy quality, worry-free Lennox heating and cooling. Call T.W. Plumbing and Heating, your Lennox dealer in Lake Mills. For fast, dependable heating and cooling, call Cresco Heating and Ventilating. Your quality Lennox dealer. Now get cash back or 0% financing. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Eradicane. For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about Eradicane. A minute 58 left. Here's the story. Timeouts remaining. Iowa 2, Indiana 3. The possession arrow to the Hoosiers. 158 left. The Hawkeyes bidding for the upset, leading by two, and they have the basketball. And now AC Earl's going to have to play guard to get it up. Now Iowa will have one timeout remaining. The statistic you saw a moment ago, what a comeback for the Hawkeyes, who are down by 16 points with 14 and a half minutes left to play. And Indiana fans thought there was travel. Iowa at 36 seconds on the shot clock. But the 10 seconds will start all over again. It is not the fact that nine seconds have been used up. That Iowa just has one second. It starts all over again. Bobby Knight was all over official London Bradley during that first part of the timeout. In fact, he's still after it. We'll be right back. A performance story. 
from Philip 66. Subject, the environment. The fragile, the beautiful, the irreplaceable. How do we help ensure they'll remain part of our environment? Example, this water treatment system made with a Phillips plastic that helps keep our rivers clean, clear, and alive. Phillips 66, you'll find performance in everything we do. Remember those tickets your husband bought? Yeah, sure. If this is the only time you've been ticketed by the police recently, you might qualify for a special Farm Bureau auto insurance rate. Thanks. Call us for complete details today. A minute 48 left. Iowa 69, Indiana 67. Iowa basketball with street to inbound. And Indiana with full court pressure. And they have got Jones. And Reynolds in the clock. What is it now? Bobby Knight now goes to the scoring table. I'll tell you what he's telling. What he said was at the start of the last sequence, it was 158. The shot clock only had nine seconds off of it, but the game clock had 10 seconds off of it. He's trying to make a point to the officials. To no avail, I might add. I was trying to work a clear out for Kevin Smith, and Reynolds is right with him and gets the five count. The ball will go back to Indiana. Tom Davis questions London Bradley on the call, but it's Indiana basketball with a minute 34 to play. Tom Davis thought there was the five-foot differential between the defender and the offensive player. It is the generally accepted distance that breaks up that five-second count. And now the Hoosiers can tie it with the two and take the lead with the three. seconds to go in the game. And you know Indiana is going to look for one of those backside screens to try and get someone open. Lyndon Jones has been red hot all night. Still in. High at 69. Great drive down the middle. A.C. Earl given the opportunity to block that shot. Could not come up with it. Okay, now the shot clock is at 35 and the game clock is at 50. So there's a 15 second differential. Moses will take the shot. Nover had the rebound and then he was fouled. Foul on Kevin Smith. Smith is fouled out with 42 seconds to play. The game now tied at 69. Moses wide open for the three. His shot dead on, just deep. And then Novar, Smith reaches up to grab for the ball. Gets a wrist. And of course, Novar, he said, one of the four shooters, 67%, 68% from the free throw line. In this game, he's one out of three. So he tries to put Indiana into the lead. watching around the country on ESPN. Larry Morgan and Mack McCausland at the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where Iowa trying to upset the fourth-rated Indiana Hoosiers. Nopra has just missed a free throw, and so the score is still tied at 69. 42 seconds remain. 69 all. One more free throw for Nopra when we come back following these messages. The destructive force of a hurricane, it can eat up miles of shoreline and property. Yet where this tough, porous fabric developed by Phillips 66 has been put down, the shore has been protected. It lets water pass through. It keeps sand and earth from washing out between the rocks and undermining seawalls. Today, those walls still stand strong, helping protect man and property against hurricanes yet to come. High-quality, super-clean gasoline for your car. And more from Phillips 66. How John Deere Leadership Works for J.D. Wiles. They offered me a devil of a good deal, but it just wasn't built like a John Deere. I've always been a John Deere man, always liked using green equipment, 
Still, my dealer's one of the big reasons I do business with John Deere. He's got good equipment, real good mechanics. I put a lot of trust in him. Game tied at 69. Heading over the freshman from Chesterton, Indiana to the line, trying to give the Hoosiers the lead with 42 seconds to play. The problem for Iowa now is zero timeouts. Indiana has three. The possession arrow favors the Hoosiers. Iowa during that last timeout will set up an opportunity. They will not have a designated shooter, but they'll have a designated opportunity off a set play. They'll want to try and run. Chris Street on the best rebounding night of his career pulls down another one for the Hawkeyes. 69 all, Iowa ball, shot clock is off, and you're looking at the game clock. I was going to their delay game. They want to have the ball at the end of the game, win it or lose it, in the last four or five seconds. Or have the opportunity to win it or lose it. Again, it is tied at 69. That's Barnes. Barnes for the game winner. And this one is headed for overtime. Iowa and Indiana will play another five, and for the Hawkeyes, their first overtime game of the season. At the end of regulation, the Hoosiers and the Hawkeyes, even at 69. The overtime period coming up, and we'll be back to bring it your way following these messages. Born of the finest natural ingredients, then brewed and aged with extra care for that clean, crisp, cold taste. The taste only Budweiser can deliver. The king of beers. You know, I never knew a farmer to beat around the bush. So to find out why they're switching from dual and lasso to eradicane, let's ask a farmer. Doug, why'd you switch? I heard other people were happy with eradicane. I thought I'd better try it too. How's it work for you? We just had real good results with eradicane. Other products are kind of iffy, but eradicane works every year. For better grass control than dual or lasso, ask a farmer about eradicane. Hey! All right, Paul. Yeah, whoa, whoa. There we go. <laughs> Overtime at Bloomington, Indiana, and for the Hoosiers, their second consecutive overtime game. They play two extra periods on Sunday, losing to Ohio State. For Iowa and Tom Davis, their first OT this year. I could almost hear the ugh from Columbus, Ohio, when Val Barnes took that shot. You know Randy Ayers and the players wanted that one to go down. A lot of free throws, but Iowa having a great night from the line. 24 of 27 at Assembly Hall. Now, what makes no sense is that Indiana, number two in the conference in free throw percentage, and Iowa's dead last. And in this overtime now, Iowa will get one timeout. They're giving an additional timeout. Uh -uh. Earl has it hammered away, but Moses gets it back. And for James Moses, it's a 14-point night, and Iowa leads 71-69. because of fouls. Kevin Smith was fouled out for Iowa. And Jones has been red hot for the Hoosiers. That equals a career high for Lyndon Jones, his 21st point. Looked like Damon Bailey reached on the elbow. Bailey's fourth foul. Bailey on the wrist. His fourth and already gone. Eric Anderson. And Kevin Smith. We mentioned Kevin Smith for Iowa and of course Anderson for Indiana. First miss of the game for A.C. Earl. He hit eight free throws in a row. If he hits this one, the game will be tied at 72. 4 10 left in overtime. 19 
Tracy Earl had a string of double-figure games of 20 stat Saturday night against Wisconsin. He may be starting another one if he has 19 in this one. Bailey blocked by Earl. AC's third block of the game and 89th of the season. AC is the defensive force inside in the Big Ten. Great timing, kept the ball in play. Barnes! 19 for Val Barnes. Val Barnes, not a great jumper, but he stops so quickly and just elevates himself to get above the defender. Dover tries to tie, he'll have to do it at the line as he is fouled by AC Earl. And for Earl, his second foul. 325 left in overtime. Iowa leads by two. Penetration by Indiana. Novar trying to take it up on the baseline. He's been here a lot in the last five minutes. A look away pass that time by Bailey. Acero wasn't fooled by the eyes of Damon Bailey. He just watched the ball. Back to live action. Nover hits the first free throw. Making it a one-point Iowa lead. Now Nover ties it up. Had a chance to give Indiana the lead at the tail end of regulation. Missed two. Now an overtime hits two. Game tied, 74, 320 to go in overtime. Nover putting four fouls, so he's got to be careful against A.C. Earl. Jones rebounds for the Hoosiers. Not really a good shot. Looking at the clock by A.C. Earl. That shot was available for him at any time. Two fifty remains in overtime. Cheney underneath, and he is fouled. A.C. Earl tried to help out, and A.C. picked up the personal. Earl's third foul. Cheney curls around this time with the right hand and tries to bring that ball under A.C. Earl's arms. That's a pro type move trying to draw that foul. Cheney, second in the conference at free throw percentage, has missed five in a row prior to that one. Hoosiers have the lead, 75-74. Indiana takes the lead at 76-74, and they take a timeout. Timeout, 245, left in overtime. Indiana by two. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. We are all, all right! I was just watching CBS Sports. They make me want to shout, kick my heels up and shout, throw my head back and shout, reach my hands up and shout, come on now, hey, 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 You know they make me want to shout, kick my heels up and shout, throw my head back and shout, reach my hands back and shout, come on now, shout, hey. There's no one for the CBS Sports and KIMT TV3, something to shout about. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Budweiser, know when to say when. Amana. Value Hardware. And by Phillips 66 Petroleum. The Indiana lead is 2, 245 left in overtime. Guess who's your pressure? Street finds Val Barnes. That helps to be 6'8 and be a former quarterback in high school. And even though you're a freshman, be very calm under duress. 
This is tremendous pressure by Indiana. And right there, James Moses slipped, fell down. And as he fell down, Indiana players stepped right in front to deflect that ball. But then Bailey stepped out of bounds trying to charge to the other end. So it's Iowa ball. 2.19 to go, a new 45 set on the shot clock. 76-74, Hoosiers in overtime. A blocking foul on Reynolds. And Knight explodes. Double foul. Jody Sylvester has the block, saying the man is moving, and Tom Rucker had a charge, and Tom Davis cannot believe it. Tom Davis pacing in front of the Hawkeye bench, and Sylvester on the right of your screen. Tom Rucker on the left. Go through whole seasons in Nazi double fouls, and Tom Davis can't believe it. That's one that the uh, officials will look at again and again. Or should there be consultation on that to discuss and then make the call one way or the other? Like you say, how many times a year watching every game on TV do you find a double foul? So Indiana gets the ball on the possession arrow with 2.12 to play. They lead in overtime, 76-74. No free throws in a double foul, just the possession arrow, and it went to Indiana. If there's any consequence to Iowa, they get the possession. Cheney fouled will go to the line, where he has struggled mightily tonight. So unusual for him. A.C. Earl picks up the personal. A.C. Earl now in foul problems. He has his board. Cheney wants to dunk this. He wants to take it up and down. Earl doesn't allow the easy basket. But how aggressive can A.C. be now in the last minute 56? Cheney's got the rhythm back. After missing five in a row, he's not hit three in a row. Cheney with 24. He leads Indiana. Lyndon Jones has 21 points for the Hoosiers. For the Hawks, Barnes has 19. Earl has 19. Street with the rebound. 77-74. Indiana, 151 left in overtime. I'll guarantee you, Tom Davis still can't believe there was a double foul. Cheney, his fourth. And Troy Skinner, I was leading free throw shooter. We'll get the two shots. An 83% free throw shooter on the year. 74 of 89 for Skinner from the line. His only points tonight, a three-pointer in the first half. Pat Graham into the Indiana lineup, replacing Chris Reynolds. So the two youngest teams in the Big Ten Conference take it into overtime. With Iowa bidding to upset the fourth-rated team in the country, the 22-3 Hoosiers. Skinner silences the sold-out crowd. Indiana 77, Iowa 75. One-point game. Clutch free throws. Street as Bailey brings it into the front court. Now Indiana with the change of bringing in Pat Graham. They have an offensive player, but not near the defensive player Chris Reynolds. Would be for him if he were. Again, Eric Anderson is fouled out for Indiana, and Kevin Smith is fouled out for Iowa. The pass intended for Cheney. Picked off by Moses. Iowa, a chance to take the lead. And again, Iowa has the opportunity for a two for one with a minute 10. They can shoot with maybe a minute to 55 seconds left and still have them. the ball come back to them with plenty of time. You go under a minute on the game clock and to 25 on the shot clock. Skinner will be at the line. Fouled by Lyndon Jones. And the 
33% free throw shooter. We'll have a chance to give Iowa the lead in overtime. And it can be a two for one. A break for Iowa. Inside, Moses steps in there to deflect that ball, grab it. Bob Knight doesn't agree with it. As Troy Skinner ties the shoe, but Iowa does get that two for one. 50 seconds on the game clock. And Indiana has the 45 seconds. They have to shoot the ball. It's tied at 77. in front, 78-77. That is the time left in overtime. Hey, put away your fingernail clippers. Who's going to bite them now? Got a four and a half second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. As Cheney drives, he's fouled by streak. And Cheney will now try to put the Hoosiers ahead at the foul line. Street is drawing his fourth foul. Street, Webb, and Earl, four fouls apiece. Cheney has been an inconsistent free throw shooter at best tonight. Don Davis sees his young team without a senior leading by one at Indiana with 30 seconds to go in overtime. High game. Okay, what a tremendous effort by that young Iowa team on the road. They've had some ups and downs, but this is one of their shining moments. And of course, they're looking to upset one of those top-ranked teams to get into the NCAA tournament. Jones out. Jamal Meeks takes his place. This is for the Hoosier lead. 79-78 Indiana. Bobby Knight will use the timeout. 30 seconds left in overtime. It's Indiana by one. It's Hawks ball when we return following these messages. Nothing beats a bud with a friend. Nothing beats what we've got here. Nothing beats clean, crisp, cold. Nothing beats the king of beers. Yeah, nothing. How John Deere leadership works for J.D. Wiles. They offered me a devil of a good deal, but it just wasn't built like a John Deere. I've always been a John Deere man, always liked using green equipment. Still, my dealer's one of the big reasons I do business with John Deere. He's got good equipment, real good mechanics. I put a lot of trust in him. There's the game reset. Iowa with the additional timeout because of the overtime, and Indiana with two left. Iowa has the possession arrow, 30 seconds in overtime. Indiana with a one-point lead, Iowa with the basketball. Welcome to viewers on ESPN. The Hawkeyes have come back from a 16-point deficit. We're now in overtime. Iowa trails by one. They've got the ball, 30 seconds left. Iowa now will keep the ball, I would expect, in the hands of Val Barnes. That's the man who has it. The Titans have the opportunity to either have Val Barnes or A.C. Earl get the ball low. Both have Points tonight. Barnes took the last shot in regulation. It did not go down. And a timeout is taken by Iowa with eight seconds to play. Iowa was not getting what they wanted on that. A good timeout. It's Iowa's last timeout. Back with the finish after these words from your local station. Welcome to the great indoors. Welcome to the February sale at McGregor Home Furnishings. Families have curled up with cozy savings from McGregor's every February since 1896. And this year is no exception. McGregor's has reduced prices store-wide to bring you many of the winner's warmest values. February isn't nearly as hard to take when you have beautiful new furniture from McGregor's. Shop soon 
at any of McGregor's eight store locations. Announcing the new 1991 Plymouth Sundance America. At just $76.99, it's the lowest priced American car and the lowest priced car in the world with an airbag. Sundance is a sporty five-seater that comes with a lot of great features like power steering and power brakes. Plus, it has plenty of cargo space and gets great mileage. Now, that's value that's hard to beat, and that's Advantage Plymouth. Visit your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now, where you have the advantage. 20 years in this building, the Hoosiers have won 84% of their Big Ten games. The Hawkeyes have not won here since 85. They have a chance to do it. They have the ball. Eight seconds left in overtime. They're down by one. It's critical. Iowa has no timeouts left. Indiana will take one more. That leaves them one timeout. Timeout called by Indiana. So obviously, Bob Knight looking for one specific thing in the way that Iowa set up, and then he used the timeout. But the problem Iowa faces, if Indiana puts somebody right on the ball, Chris Street taking it out. They have to get the ball inbounds. If not, it would be a turnover. One thing Chris Street has to think about or be alerted to is the possibility of bouncing it off the legs of the defender right in front of him, and he's got to be able to get out of the way so it doesn't hit him if the ball is reflected towards him. That is a lot of pressure on a freshman, but he is a heady freshman who inbounds exceptionally well. Well, it goes back to his high school experience. A 6'8 quarterback, a very good quarterback. People thought he would play Division I football. He chose basketball at Iowa instead. But once the ball is inbounds, only eight seconds. They would like to have Val Barnes have it in his hands. He was a clutch performer at Butler County Junior College. And then, of course, A.C. Earl down low has been very effective all season. And you know, with Val Barnes' quiet confidence, he'd love to have one more opportunity at the last shot. Again, to review our situation, as Iowa has rallied from 16, we're now in overtime. It's the Hawkeyes' ball. That's all that's left, eight seconds. Iowa has no timeouts to use. Indiana has one. And if there should be a tie ball, it would go to the Hawks. Moses, Barnes, Skinner, Earl, and Street on the floor for Iowa. Dover, Bailey, Cheney, Meeks, and Reynolds on the line and on the floor for Indiana. And nobody is on the ball. They're able to get it in high to A.C. Earl. Earl for the lead, Street for the rebound. It's tipped in. Tipped in, James Moses. And it counts. It counts. It counts. Moses. Moses with his 16th point, the biggest tip in of his career. And the Hawkeyes, who last one with, lost one with one second left Saturday against Wisconsin, win one here. They upset the fourth way to team in the country. Iowa wins it in a tip in by Moses, 80-79. Tom Davis plays a zone the entire game, able to come out and win this game. Ace Earl not taking the shot. You would certainly anticipate having a 6'11 player right at the three-point area. Six seconds left. Chris Street misses a point-blank layup, and then Moses, athletic tip in, getting it to go down, no time left. Moses, whose steals had been such a key factor for the Hawkeyes, gets the game winner, a tip in at the buzzer in overtime. What a huge win for the Iowa basketball team. And the NCAA is just around the corner for the Hawkeyes, but they have to take care of business at home against Illinois on Saturday. The Hawkeyes.